Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. Commit everything to the Lord is the title of this devotion. You know, I really feel this week to just simply encourage you and strengthen you in the faith, believing that the Holy Spirit will fill you with hope in believing, as it says in Romans 15, or 13, 15. You know, the Lord, He is able to lift us out of feelings of despair or feelings it's not happening back into that divine flow where His providence is so moving in our lives, as I talked about last Monday, where we have such childlike trust, knowing that our Father loves us, seeing His divine grace and power moving us forward and there where we can just commit everything to him and i understand that is often a work of uh, it's it's a work of god to bring you into a place where yes you go to work and yes you do your part and at the same time you trust god to work by his spirit you trust god to make your way prosperous it's where david started in the psalms where he says Walk, do not uh, he, listen, uh, but uh, how does he say it? I, I know it so well, but it just flipped my mind here. Uh, Blessed is the man here comes who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law, in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the river of water that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaves shall not wither. Whatever he does shall prosper. Will you delight yourself in God and in his word? David says, unless your word had been my daily delight, I would have perished in the way in Psalm 119. I would have perished. I, I wouldn't have made it, Lord. But your word was a light to my path, a lamp to my feet. And I, I want to charge you, friends. Sometimes we are coming through some of the bottlenecks of life. And again, things are maybe challenging in, 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 in certain ways. And God is wanting to show himself strong on your behalf as your heart stays loyal to him. And where he is looking for you to completely yield into him where you commit it into his hand and trust him, trust him. Oh friends, if we would not have done this over the 35 years that we've had the privilege to be the pastors here for Janie and I, but so many amazing, beautiful people, we wouldn't be here today. We would have been, we would have perished this, I think, and therefore I have hope through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed, destroyed. Great is his faithfulness, Lamentations 3 verse 21. Friends, it isn't success, it is not dependent on our excellence. Wow, it is so essential we give our best in God's service in all that we are, say and do. But that is not the key to success. David said in Psalm 71 verse 5, I think it is, in the Living Bible says it this way, my success at which so many stand amazed is because of you, Lord. Oh, how I believe this with all my heart. So listen to the scripture. I've read it to you before this week and I just feel to go back to it. Trust in the Lord, Psalm 37 verse three, and do good. Dwell in the land, feed on his faithfulness, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Here it comes. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring it to pass. That word commit is roll unto the Lord. Roll it unto the Lord. Just bring that whole burden of what you're carrying. You know, I think about taking care of my dear, lovely wife when she's been going through some physical challenges. And I just daily, I roll that, 
the privilege I have unto him to enable me to care for her, to love her, to be tender with her, to be gentle with her, to be kind with her, to be good with her. And through my being with her, that she feels the love of God, the presence of God upholding her, carrying her. And that's a small example, not to boast in myself, but to boast in the Lord that he will do it. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust also in Him. He shall bring it to pass. He shall bring it to pass. Believe this. Believe. Your Father will bring things to pass as you commit, as you roll your burdens upon the Lord. I, I, I love this scripture, and I've mentioned it to you earlier, where he says here in Psalm Six, no, 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 no. Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16. He says, The plans of our mind or orderly thinking belong or is our responsibility. How we, what we meditate on. But from the Lord comes the wise answer from the tongue. And all the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirit, the thoughts and the intent of the heart. So roll your works upon the Lord, commit and trust them wholly to him. He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable with his will. So shall your plans be established. So it, it, some people say, did God give you the idea? It's a combination of the two. It's like, okay, pastor, how did you know to be a pastor? How did you know to start a church in Folkestone, in Kent, in Britain? I mean, you come from the Netherlands, you, you've lived in America, you, could, you were married in America, you, you could be anywhere. You've been to so many nations in the world. Why, why Britain, why Folkestone? Yeah, it came in my spirit. When the Lord called me out of the Netherlands in 1985, he spoke to me. He called me out of the Netherlands and I left in February of 86. When that happened, instantly came in my spirit this knowing of Britain. And I just knew it in the spirit. We're going to Britain. We went to the United States for a couple of months. I knew I was supposed to go to Britain. And while I'm living in America and working there for a few months, then I felt to take a time to fast and pray. While I was fasting and praying, some man I'd never met, never knew about, never heard of, didn't know anything about, called me. Somehow he had heard, and, and he called me, Michael Lansman, uh, from Pennsylvania, he called me, he said, Robert Bosworth. I said, yes. He said, I'm Michael Lansman. I heard that the Lord has called you to Britain. I said, yes, he has. He says, do you have any contacts? I said, no, I know nobody. I've not been there. He said, okay. He said, would you like me to set up some meetings for you? I said, please. And so I went to Britain. God made the way. All I could do is roll my care, the thought he put in my heart onto him. So I'm in Britain, living in Britain and traveling around Britain and, and pioneering. And then my wife said to me one day, you know, darling, I feel my spirit that the Lord would have us pastor again. What do you think about this? I said, oh, honey, honey, when we left Holland, I was in pain because I missed the congregation. We were pastors of in Schiedam, near Rotterdam in the Netherlands. I missed the congregation deeply and I was in such pain. I said, Lord, you called me out of this. You have to take this out of me. I woke up the next morning, it was gone. It was gone, it wasn't in me anymore. It didn't pull on me anymore. The pain was gone, the Lord took it. She said, well, if he wants you to pastor, ask him to put it back. <laughs> like her. Huh? common sense. I said, okay. So I said, Father, if you want me to pastor again, put it back in my heart. Literally, I woke up the next morning and I felt the yearning in my heart to be a pastor. I had felt that 
yearning so deep inside of me for the years that I had the privilege to pastor alongside my father, Johann Maasbach. Oh, what a joy it was to work alongside him. He was such a precious, humble, gracious, meek man. And to work alongside him was such a privilege and honor that I could learn by watching him and being with him and, and having Christ formed in me how to become a shepherd after the Lord's character, nature, and mercy. And so that, that same longing came back in me. And then I was praying. I said, Lord, where? Where? And the Holy Spirit put inside of me, Kent. And I said to Virginia, honey, I feel Kent. She said, I had the exact same thing. I said, where's Kent? So we looked on the map. We found the county of Kent. It's a large county on the southeast corner of Britain. So I said, let's go. We got in the car. We were living in Bath near Bristol. And we drove to Kent in our little bitty old 17-year-old little mini. And we drove through Kent and saying, Lord, where, where? We'd never been to Kent. We didn't know Kent. To make a story short, rolling your works, committing it unto the Lord, and He will bring it to pass. He will guide you. The Lord began to guide us and lead us. And I could go on and on in this story, but I don't want to make it all about this story. I just want to encourage you today. When you are committing something to the Lord, right? Commit everything to the Lord. It's like Jesus saying in John chapter 5, verse 19, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father doing. Right here. Jesus answered, said, most assuredly, verse 19 of John 5, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father do. Whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does, and he will show him greater works than these that you might marvel. This is somebody having committed everything to God and God will do it. Do you see it? Now, come on, have that, invite that, seek that, pursue that heart that you commit everything to him. My marriage is in your hands, Lord. I trust you. If it's, if it's all up to me, I can make a mess of it. Jeremiah said, even when I'm at my best, I make a mess of it in the book of Jeremiah. Direct me, correct me, instruct me, teach me, correct me, but not in your displeasure, lest I be consumed, but in your loving favor, correct me. If I have a way about me that isn't your way, correct, perfect me. And you're committing. That's what it means to commit. You keep yielding it, surrendering it, surrendering it, committing it to him and watching him in that working of committing, surrendering, submitting, him begin to work, him begin to turn things, him begin to lead things. I love what, what, what Paul, and I've prayed this for many, many years, what Paul says in chapter 3, verse 4 of 2 Corinthians. We have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency, our ability is from God. Come on. The Living Bible would say this, but I would never dare think anything comes from myself for my ability is what God works through me. Jesus said the same thing. He said in John 14, he said the words that I speak to you, I speak not of my own authority, but it's the Father who's in me who does the works. And the same works you see the Father do in me, you will see in yourself so that whatever you ask him in my name, I will do it. Jesus is that working in you and me. Now believe, as you commit it to him and keep committing it and keep committing it and keep committing it, how he begins to work, how he begins to work, how he begins to work. Can I give you one little thought in closing that I utterly love and, and that I feel is such an inspiration 
to help us trust, to commit everything to God and to just keep yielding it and trusting it every day. Father, I'm trusting you. Father, I commit this business to you. I commit this marriage to you. I commit these financial circumstances to you. Where you would have fainted, God empowers you to endure and persevere and come through into a new place of grace and blessings. Here you can see this beautifully in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the church of Macedonia, that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. Now I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing, imploring us, besieging, begging us, so to speak, with much urgency that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and by, and then to us by the will of God. Now he says, I want you to see this grace enabling these people to give when they themselves were going through painful poverty and to rejoice when they themselves were going through sore afflictions. He said, this is the working of God. This is a life wholly yielded to him. This is a life wholly surrendered to him. This is a life that is committed to him and that has committed everything to him. And that while in the natural realm, you could not give a penny, you give more. While in the natural realm, you couldn't have joy, you rejoice more. Come on, think about this. A widow's husband who was a prophet had died and she went to Elisha and she said, alas, master, my husband has perished and left us with debt and I have nothing with which to repay it. And me and my sons, we are now in deep trouble. And the prophet Elisha said to her, what do you have in your house? She said, all I have in my house is a little bit of oil. Maybe it was Elijah and not Elisha. Anyway, a, a little bit of oil. He said, okay, get every kind of container you can get from all your friends and everybody everywhere. Bring them into your house. Let your sons help them and begin to pour the oil. And, and then go sell, pay off the debt and live off the rest. <clears throat> she believed. She committed her circumstances to the divine providence of God. And with her sons, they got all these vessels and that little bitty that urn that she had in which was some oil, she began to pour and it did not stop that by the divine providence. You could see that anointing was upon Elijah when he came into Seraphith, where the widow had just enough oil for one bread and it did not cease to flow for three and a half years because of the divine providence. When you commit thanks to God, His grace can take you beyond what is naturally possible. Amen. Have a good day.